Today Unity is sponsoring this video and they challenged me to pick 10 assets and make a game with those assets. I didn't add to use them all. So let me show you how a VFX artist made a game in 48 hours and how that turned out. Let's see what happened. So I wanted to make a game where I could combine most of these and showcase some of my skills as a VFX artist and mostly unrest myself as a programmer. But I guess it's like riding a bike, you actually never forget it. I wanted something simple for this game, like a roguelike, where you have a bunch of enemies and waves will become bigger and bigger. And at the end of each wave you get a power up that will heal or increase damage or move faster. And every 3 waves you complete, you get a new ability. Until we have a maximum of 7 abilities. That is, if you can reach that far, if you know what I mean. But, yeah. So on my first day, instead of reinventing the wheel, I thought to myself, what if I picked this old project that I made for a VFX course, where I have Tunnel Lord already moving around and spawning abilities. Well, to this day I'm still wondering if that was a good idea, because it turned out to be a double-edged sword. I had to relearn what I coded 3 or 4 years ago, I had to fix a lot of bugs and adapt the whole thing to what I wanted. So yeah, I'm not sure that I've saved time here. But since I had the character moving around and spawning abilities, now I could worry about the enemy. I needed something simple, the enemy would move towards the player would follow the player. So here's Bean Boy following me around and working with A Star Pathfinding, another great asset by the way. Well he was my little companion, you know, until I tried to kill him, but he would dodge all of my bullets. Somehow. Here we go, now I should be able to hit him. So I tried this with a bunch of enemies that I simply duplicated to the scene to test the idea of enemy waves, and at this time they already had some attributes like health points and I was already using feel to get some feedbacks every time we hit the enemy. He shakes and we see the damage number. I was really happy with this at this point actually. I also reused this HP bar from one of the field demos and it was reacting to enemies hitting the player, which was also very cool. Basically if the enemies touch the player they die, they explode. And I mean what possible bugs could we have at this point? None, it's running smoothly. There's nothing to see here. Once I fixed some of these collision bugs, I began drafting the enemy wave script. Basically, on level 1 it will spawn 3 enemies, on level 2 it will spawn 4 enemies, level 3 5 enemies and so on. It will keep on adding one enemy to the wave. So that turned out well actually, I even had this counter for the levels, which I think will basically work as a score and people would try to get to the highest level possible. I was super happy with my first day, where I worked around 8 hours, but on my second day I wasn't able to work that much due to health checkups. But in the afternoon I began working on Drops Manager. It's basically a sphere and it would detect if it was an ability, health, damage up or movement speed. I had the health drop working fairly easily, then the damage too, and eventually the movement speed. I tried to add another for attack speed, but since I don't have the abilities implemented at this point, I left it for later, which I eventually didn't find the time to implement. So 3 power ups. But it was working out well, each wave completed would spawn a power up and every 3 waves a new ability spawns, which at the time was the same armor projectile, but with a blue tint. And that was my second day, not that much was done. I still have a company to manage, Golden Bug, where we are making rabbit's tail, go wishlist it now by the way. But I worked around 4 hours more or less. On my third day I made lots of progress actually, and was focused on adding new abilities and switch between them. So I worked on what I called the ability deck, which is these numbers that represent an ability and with the keyboard you could switch back and forth between abilities. Yeah, at least it was reacting to my button's press, you know? Now, yeah, now it was reacting a little bit better, but I wanted to make sure that the empty buttons without abilities were grayed out. It would shake and turn red, basically, if they don't have anything, something like this, where I switch between yellow project and blue projectile with 1 and 2, and it will gray out the rest and whatnot. Awesome! That was part of the morning, 
before lunch I still had time to test a new ability, the Cassadin Slash and how that would work and yeah, it didn't work out very well that's when problems began showing up because I was reusing code from Thunderlord project and it was hard to integrate with what I wanted I actually tested another one, the Herd Bender ability and it was something I also replaced the sphere for the drops with orbs from the VFX Graph Ultra Mega Pack but yeah, they also add bugs too. How great! I have an ocean of bugs to deal with. So, for the casting slash, it was rotated in the wrong direction, it turned out. So, once I fixed that and a bunch of other things, it kind of looked alright, yeah. The Herdbender, it turned out to be pretty funny because I could damage the player and block his path, which wasn't something I was planning on, but it turned out to be interesting. With these two new abilities working well, I moved on to another one. The Fire Tornado. Yeah, just... yeah, okay. I also noticed it only damaged one enemy at a time, which wasn't great. I wanted this to damage over time, so I had to code an AoE script that would detect which enemies were inside the trigger and when did they exit the trigger and then damage them based on the rate, something like this. Yeah, I still had a lot of bug fixing to do, but that was it for my third day. It was shaping up nicely, I believe. I had worked around 10 hours on that day, which means almost a day in total, and things were shaping up, essentially. On the next day, I implemented a quick pause function and a few more abilities, like this fire impact, and then this Meteor Rain, where each Meteor would damage the enemy. And I also added this Ice Attack, which turned out to work well. Yeah, I then made a few quick improvements to the pause menu with a resume and restart button and moved on to the die screen too, where it shows the max level reached and there's a restart button. Simple stuff, you see. Then it was time to improve this visually, so at the very end of the fourth day, I still managed to create the die feedback with Phil. And I think it turned out pretty cool. It was a very productive day, I would say. I worked around 10 hours, if not more, which means in total I was around 35 38 hours, more or less. Then the next day I wasn't able to work, so on my last day, which was Sunday, the fifth day, the day before the delivery, I split my time between polishing as much as I could and recording and editing this video as well. So it was time to use the low poly ultimate pack as much as I could, it was huge, I had no trouble finding content and I went with these Egyptian assets and a couple more things and then built this scene basically. And I spread a few smokes and fires here and there across the scene and even made this hazard fireplace, where you get damage over time if you stand there, you know. I was pleased with it, so I moved on to implement a few more visual effects for every time you pick an orb and its respective feedback with Phil. We got the heal, the move speed and the damage done. Things were shaping up nicely. I then tried to add as many sound effects as I could from the Universal Sound Effects Pack. There's plenty of sounds there. And at this point, I decided to implement the name of the ability you picked. And at the very, very end, I was still able to replace the Bean Boy now with the Zombie Boy that I found in the low poly pack. And add a little bit of blood I found on the Ultra Mega pack. And every time he dies, half of him spawns with a random rotation, which I think it came out really interesting. Sometimes I'd rather go against them just to see them die. I know, weird stuff to say, but it feels great. And you guys will be able to try it. Overall, I guess it came down really nice, really well. There's a couple of bugs here and there. I will try to polish them, but I was able to create what I was aiming for in a short time frame and to use most of the assets that I'm promoting and even include some of my effects, which is awesome. And that's it. I, I made this entire game available on my itch.io page, I left the link below, go download it, play it, leave a comment and I will try to run a couple more updates, maybe, we'll see. 
Oh, and don't forget to check out the Unity Asset Store sale that I left the link below and the assets used for this game. They are awesome and the publishers, creators have done a really great job. So that's it guys, hope you have enjoyed, bye and I hope to see you on the next one.